Hey guys, Blazing Wrath here, and today I'm going to give my thoughts on the Halo Infinite multiplayer beta. Thankfully I'm glad to be making this video late because ever since the first day of the Infinite beta being live, 343 has already been quick on making updates and just bug fixes in general throughout the entire game. Well, except for the campaign, which I'm very eager to play. Now to start off, I'm actually going to mention something that I think we should all appreciate. And that is the fact that the servers and overall netcode of the game is working pretty well. Some people did have issues logging into the beta, but thankfully 343 was able to fix that really quick. Remember, given the, that this is a free-to-play title on both Xbox and PC, the servers could have been easily overbloated and just fucked. Thankfully, one of the reasons why 343 decided to release the multiplayer early is because 343 was confident that the servers were ready to go. And it's also all thanks to us for those of us that played in those technical flights earlier. Those flights were meant to stress test the servers as well as bug fixing and whatnot. Which as far as bugs and glitches go for this game, uh, so far they're really, they've been put to a minimal and so far they've been squashed. But there is still a few lingering on, in a couple other areas in the game. Thankfully the online multiplayer environment seems to be working pretty well and everybody is having a good time. I guess I should apologize in advance that this, my thoughts on this game so far is going to be a bit sporadic as this video is just more like a opinion drop in ju on just everything I'm feeling so far. I'll also mention some news information just to get the word out. And as of the making of this video, yesterday 343 just announced that the game has gone gold. So basically the game is finished and I'm assuming there will be a day one patch coming December 8th. Here are the times on when the multiplayer will be finished alongside the campaign. I'd also like to mention if for some reason you haven't logged into the multiplayer beta yet, you can get these 20th anniversary items just for logging into the beta. Be warned as you only have until November 22nd to unlock these items just for logging in. On top of this, 343 also released two awesome trailers that I highly recommend you look at. One of them is just a general hype trailer to get everyone playing the game and as well as celebrating Halo's 20th anniversary. And the other trailer is to help promote HCS team, team skins for the competitive scene of Halo Infinite. I'll leave links to those videos down in the description. There's also some awesome new screenshots to find on the internet on top of those videos. Speaking of competitive Halo, here's the full roadmap on what to expect this year. 343 did release more information on how online and offline tournaments will work as well as their formats that I will leave down in the description. Moving on to IGN, they released a 5 minute exclusive gameplay footage on the Halo Infinite campaign. Don't worry, I checked it out and it's all good. No spoilers. I will leave that down in the description. Okay, now that was a major news dump that I just wanted to get out there. Now to talk about one major criticism I have about the beta, as well as everyone else. Let's talk about Halo Infinite's Season 1 Battle Pass, Heroes of Reach. Now it is nice to have classic Reach armor pieces back into Halo Infinite, as Halo Reach is considered the best Halo game that has the best armor customization. However, as of right now, the Battle Pass is not worth grinding at the moment. Now I am aware 343 did make some adjustments and fixes to like uh, XP rewarding and challenges, but even with these changes, which is a, a small improvement, yeah, it's not big enough. And like I said, in my opinion, it's, it's not worth grinding at the moment. I can't think of any solution right now as to help improve uh, Battle Pass progression, but I know 343 is on the case and, is, and they are working on a long-term solution. For now, they just put a band-aid on the problem. On top of that temporary fix, 343 is also offering this Sigil Visor, which you can earn just by logging in between November 23rd and the 30th. You can also earn this right now just by grinding through weekly challenges, but it's, like I said, grinding through that shit is not worth it right now in my opinion, but there you go. Another issue I have with the game is the microtransactions, aka the shop. The problem with the shop is that, well, it's just simply too expensive. You get a few things like emblems, some armor pieces, and some coatings, but all for just $20? It's not worth it in my opinion. I think a simple solution would be to just let us purchase something individually. Because as of right now, everything's being bundled into like $10 or $20 like bundles. Like for example, if I see a cool armor coating or weapon coating, whatever, maybe an armor coating costs like 2 or $3, and then a weapon coating, depending if it's one gun or maybe a set, maybe I'll pay, I don't know, 5 bucks or maybe eight, $8, I don't know. J just throwing out ideas. Or another example, like, I see some, I see a cool chess piece, but unfortunately it's bundled with other things I don't care about for like $10. I, what if I just want the chess piece? Then maybe I'll pay for the chess piece for like, I don't know, $2 or something or a dollar. 
Something like that, because when when looking at the shop, it's like I do see some cool things I want, but I don't want to pay for the whole bundle just to get that specific set. But that's like once that's probably the solution that I would do is with, with the shop, organize it, have a one list of armor coatings, chest pieces, armor pieces, co weapon coatings, vehicle coatings, etc. Just so we don't have to purchase bundles, unless if it's like a special like HCS bundle that's going on right now, but. Yeah, though, that's my solution, and I think that would make the shop better. That way, us as consumers don't have to pay out as much as we have to, and we can just pay for individual pieces that we want. I've also heard other issues with the game regarding custom games and theater. Um, apparently, custom games uh, not uh, saving like custom settings very good, as well as theater mode apparently being pretty bad, like Halo 5. But I don't know how bad it is compared to Halo 5, but I, I haven't tried these out myself. But yeah, I heard custom game options aren't saving properly, and theater mode is apparently not as functioning well as is intended. The last piece of news I want to mention is that around November 22nd or 23rd, I forget, uh, 343 is releasing a, a new event called Tenrai, which from my understanding seems to be a, a free battle pass for everyone, but it only has 30 tiers. Now this is cool as this is a battle pass free for everyone, but I'm just curious how this is going to work. As in like, does it work like, do you have to switch out the season 1 battle pass and progress through that event? Or is it something that, that just gets added to the battle pass and you can just progress through both this Tenrai event and the season 1 battle pass at the same time? I kind of hope this gets added alongside the season 1 battle pass, that way I don't have to switch out both of these battle passes and it will just be a longer grind. They also gave us a screenshot on future events that we can expect going forward. And that's pretty much it for this video. I mean, this kind of turned into more of a news video than an opinion piece. I mean, uh, the core gameplay is great. I mean, it, I got nothing else to say, uh, nothing but good things to say about it. Everybody's enjoying the gameplay. I mean, it's, it, it's just fucking good, all right? My only issues right now are just the, the shop is too expensive and the battle pass group uh, progression needs to be faster. Other than that, I've been having a ton of fun on the game. I've, I'm just enjoying learning the game, and I'm not letting the challenges really dictate how I play it, just because, well, as I keep stating over and over again, the battle pass progression and progressing through it, grinding it, it's, it's just not worth it. So right now I'm just learning the game, learning weapon placements, learning spawns, and all that jazz. Right now I'm just essentially learning the whole game right now, and that's going to keep me playing. Uh, until those couple other issues that I guess I'll quickly mention is Right now the maps, the map pools that we have, like the map pool size is good, but definitely not enough. We, we need more maps like like now, like ASAP. Um, the current map selection, while good, it, we're going to need more. It's going to get stale real fast. Even game modes. We're, we're, we're back in Halo 5 in a sense where we, we need more game modes. There, there's only like four right now and we're missing a whole ton of game modes. So. 343, you better get at those maps and game modes ASAP, or else uh, people are gonna get are gonna get over the honeymoon period, and we're and the game's gonna get stale. Another personal note I'd like to mention is the lack of player collision, which I've I've mentioned multiple times. Uh, I think it's starting to become a problem. Like I, I, I warned 343 about this, where player collision could could cause melee consistencies, and I've already like come across a couple issues where one dude grapple shot into me, he meleeed me, but because he kind of clipped through me, I meleeed back, but my melee whipped, so he was able to finish me off. And as well as I have a few of my friends like saying like they, they want player collision back as well, because again, melee inconsistencies, close range fights are a bit awkward without player collision. People are running into each other to avoid someone's melees and then just happen to get just a dumb kill. Even like for me, or like when I'm trying to go for a double melee or a melee, or whatever, I have to make sure not to clip through them, or else I'm afraid my melee will whiff. So I'm really hoping player collision comes back because the melee inconsistencies and some issues, some small issues like that, is already becoming a, a problem for me and a few other people I've heard from. I'll get into more specifics after the launch of the game, and I'm also thinking about maybe a few tips here and there to help out new new Halo players and just improve your gameplay. The game's a lot of fun to play. But anyways, that's going to do it for this video. Um, if there's any issues I've missed, leave them down in the comments. I'm sure there's some things I've probably missed. Um, of course, you can always, always follow me on Twitter, my Twitch. All my links will be down in the description. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. And until next time, peace.